Man, this movie stinks. Marco, why don't you come back to the Air Force? I've got influence now. I could work something out. Thanks for the offer, but I'd rather be a pig than a fascist. We interrupt this program to bring you... All right, everybody, my name is Kevin. And I'm Joe. And I'm Adam. And I'm Julie. And we are The Real Movie Guys. Ladies and gentlemen, it's May, so it's time for Real Anime. Real Anime is a special event where we take a look at some of your favorite anime films. This month, all May long, we're going to be taking a look at some of the greatest films from Studio Ghibli. On today's episode, we're taking a look at Porco Rosso. In 1930s Italy, a veteran World War I pilot is cursed to look like an anthropomorphic pig. That's a sentence I just made. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Um, Porco Rosso is one of those movies where, I'm not going to lie to you, I've only seen maybe bits and pieces of this movie. Um, This is the first time I've actually sat down and watched the entirety of it. And I got to tell you, I had a really, really good time with this movie. Uh, Porco Rosso definitely surprised me as to what was being delivered to the table. Uh, Miyazaki himself said uh, the greatest, uh, I wouldn't say mistake, but uh, questionable thing he did with this movie is he made an adult uh, style film for children. And I think that stands out a lot of the time. I don't know how much enjoyment children are going to get out of this movie. Uh, Maybe very, very few and far between. But for me personally, I think this was a really, really great film that, you know, I can't wait to actually watch again. Uh, Adam, talk to me. Was this the first time for you seeing Porco Rosso? Have you seen it before? Or? I've Yeah, I've seen bits and pieces, but this is absolutely the first time that I've seen like the whole thing all the way through. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was thinking the same exact thing. Like, I don't see how kids... I mean, I could see how kids would enjoy this, but it sure. definitely feels like it's more catered towards, you know, the adult themes and it at least I guess more of an understanding for an adult to I guess perceive. Right. Um, I think so. Yeah, it, it's just it, but I still enjoyed the film. I thought it was great. Yeah, and I wonder if I was a kid, I wonder what my perspective would be if I would have found Agreed. as much enjoyment out of it because as an adult, I definitely enjoyed it. I, I loved all the references and, you know, right. all the classics that were going here. I just I don't know how much as far as a kid's film, but we'll talk about it. I'm sure there's a discussion to be had here about it. John. All right, man. So you've seen Totoro and Kiki so far. You've, you've seen kind of some of the best. Porco Rosa is probably an interesting one for you. Well, what, what did you think? Oh, I was so confused going in. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I saw this pig character. I was like, what the heck is going on now? <laughs> but it was an interesting movie. Yeah. Did it you was, find uh, it enjoyable? It was fun yeah. and unique in a way. Okay. Uh, do you agree with us though about like the whole? Do you think it was really made for kids or? No, I don't think it's a kids movie. I mean, I think it's one of those you could go see this movie with your kids and you'll get more out of it than they would. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess it would fall under more of the family banner. I think we've said that before. Sometimes when we reviewed a few movies, it's not necessarily a kids movie. It's more of a family movie. Is was that more accurate? You think? Yeah, no doubt. I feel like. It's definitely a family movie, but both sides can get something out of it. Yeah, no, I, I could agree with that. Julius, I know this is your first time. Uh, what did you What did you think of this movie? This was a movie like when we were doing our first run through of Ghibli. Like you're like, oh yeah, we can watch Porco Rosso, and I've only ever seen the cover. I'm like, I do not want to watch that movie. I have no interest in watching a movie about a pig in a trench coat or whatever is up with that. But I really had a lot of fun with this movie. It was really enjoyable, um, had a lot of humor in it. You know, out of the three we've watched so far, I found myself actually laughing out loud a decent amount during this movie. Um, But then it also had, you know, some heavy moments as well. Um, I agree, I don't think it's, I guess guess it's a family movie, not necessarily a kid movie. It has some big like Casablanca vibes, you know, with like, I'm just a pig baby, like, and you know, in the, (laughs) And have all the gin joints in all the world. You know, I'd rather be a pig that. than a fascist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up with that? Um, I do love, and I know that's probably the only part I could see kids really enjoying is the opening of the movie when he's saving the little girls from the pirates. I thought that whole sequence was hysterical and I could see kids getting a kick out of that. Um, but overall, I really, I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. It was really enjoyable. 
Yeah, it, it, Porco Rosso is just a very interesting movie. And after you said, after we have that action bit in the beginning where, you know, Porco Rosso rescues all the kids from the pirates, uh, it really just goes into like a Casablanca meets like almost like a, like a, like a, like a, I don't know, like a pilot, a pirate pilot serial movie, right? Of like those old Western 1930s era kind of films and noir. And it's very interesting that the road it takes. Uh, I know Miyazaki even has said, uh, we were talking about this a little bit earlier where this, this movie does not feel Japanese whatsoever in the slightest when he, when you watch it. And even he actually prefers, I believe it's the French dub of this movie, even to the Japanese voice acting, which is kind of telling uh, that this movie definitely takes inspired more from culture. Um, This is also interesting, too, because we're seeing Miyazaki. uh, This is his I feel like this is a movie he really wanted to make Uh, like the other films. I'm not saying he didn't want to make, but this one felt very nichely specific to him, uh, especially with the mechanics of the planes and whatnot. Like you could tell there was a lot of love thrown into those designs. Uh, they were definitely, you know, he had the schematics, he had the engines, he went into details that you necessarily really don't have to go into, but you could tell Miyazaki had a fantastic time drawing and animating, uh, the fighter pilots and the planes and everything, which, uh, we will see a little bit later down the line when we come to the wind rises. Uh, that's another movie we'll be talking about this month, but I think this was his first foray and we can actually see his excitement when making this kind of movie. Um, let's talk about Porco Rosso, the main titular character here, uh, for the English dub, he is voiced by the phenomenal Michael Keaton and, I think that's a surprise to a lot of people when they hear that. Cause you usually don't hear Michael Keaton going down the voice acting route. Uh, so I don't know what Disney had on him at the time to get him to come in and do this, but uh, I'm glad they did because Michael Keaton, Adam, I, I don't know what you think, but uh, I don't think I could have pictured anybody else. He was able to deliver that like very suave and like cool guy dialogue that kind of made me convinced to li- actually like Porco Rosso as a character. Absolutely. I thought he did a great job. He had that like uh, that gruff kind of edge to his voice. And I was like, this, this is fantastic. This is exactly the voice that I would expect him to have. Right. And I, I think he did a phenomenal job with that. And even, even some of the more emotional beats, uh, when you get some of these seasoned actors, you always question if they're able to kind of step into a recording booth and give a vocal performance that would lend itself to an animated character. And Michael Keaton was able to do that, especially with some of the more emotional scenes toward the end of the movie with Porco Rosso. when we start to learn, you know, more about his past and everything going on with him. I thought that was just really, really well done. Um, now, Julie, would you say that the cover of these, like a lot of the promotional material, kind of like you hinted at, was uh, just a pig in a trench coat? It is a lot of like the kind of like the cover promotional material for this movie. It's so much more than that, I have to tell you. And I'm surprised more of the plane is. isn't more of the like known visual for this movie. I'd have to look again. Maybe there's planes in the background. Um, but yeah, I mean, but at the end of the day, I mean, that's what it's it's about. Porco Rosso, you know, he's a pilot and you know, his journey between just being kind of like a, I don't know, bounty hunter, I guess is what it was. Or yeah, like he's a, a bounty hunter. Doing odd jobs. Um, his vocal performance was perfect. Like I completely bought that he was that character. Um, he delivered the emotional beats, you know, whether he's having, you know, an existential, not existential crisis, but, you know, contemplative thoughts or riffing back and forth with one of the pirates or yelling at the girls to put their clothes back on as they're playing in the water uh, as he's fixing the plane. Like he was just so great as Porco Rosso. And I think without him, the movie wouldn't, or at least this dub would not have been as successful. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know if it would have been as memorable for me. And then also working off Cariel's playing the American, uh, you know, which is like kind of his, the the other ace he's up against throughout the entire movie. Curtis. Uh, Curtis. I think that's fantastic too. Uh, Cariel is definitely uh, delivers a pretty good American accent for a guy who's not American. Got to, got to give him some points for that. I think that's pretty awesome. I second guessed it at one point because I was looking up the cast list. I'm like, okay. And he came on like, oh, that's Cariel's. And as he's speaking, I'm like, it doesn't sound like carryalls that i know but he did a really good job yeah and this this movie i think this is where we're going to get a little bit um a little deeper now with this movie so we've seen miyazaki focus a lot on the youth of like of you know the current generation right you know we saw that with um Totoro about like the kind of like I feel like he's taking like different life steps if you will throughout his movies so far uh the first movie when we got Totoro we got like the young girls kind of living their lives you know they still have that imaginary phase right they're still seeing the magic and the fantasy of life once we got to Kiki's we kind of saw this more 
a mature route, right? We saw like Kiki kind of going into the world on her own and becoming a young woman and she kind of loses her hearing in magic. Now we're getting to Porco Rosa, which I think is a very interesting juxtaposition where the magic's gone, but it almost as if he's still a pig, the magic's kind of still there. But a lot of this movie, I think, is about like the it's kind of it's hard to talk about in a weird way, but it's about the kind of like the 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 past generation making up for the new generation, right? Like the, the past generation still has things that they have to take care of. And that's kind of what this movie is really about. Porco Rosso feels like he has to make up for some of his past misdeeds and misgivings throughout the movie. And it's an interesting tale. Again, it's not very kid friendly. So again, I, I don't know how much a child's really going to get out of these themes, but as an adult, when we see we've made mistakes in the past and we have to come to terms with things that we've done, uh, I think this is a really excellent story. And especially how the whole pig transformation turns in with this movie, uh, Adam, they don't go into too much detail about it. And I know John, we'll talk to you about it too. Um, but it can't be kind of confusing, right? Especially by the end of the movie, like we, we don't know how he became a pig. Uh, we don't really know, like, if he ever turns back into a human, if he can. Like, there's glimpses of things that can happen. What did you think of the whole pig idea thrown into this movie? Do you think it's actually really core to the storytelling here? I do, because there's a reason why he's the only one that's a pig. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's it's also another situation, like, uh, where Kiki, you know, she's a witch, but everybody just kind of is okay with it. Yeah. He's a pig and everybody's just kind of okay with it. <laughs> um, but I, I think that it's not more so for the characters in the movie, but it's more so for us to perceive him as a character. Uh, kind of like, you know, makes me wonder, what did he do to become a pig? Yeah, and that's interesting. And, um, you know, we get halfway through the movie and they introduced a female protagonist uh, in the movie, which I think is very it wasn't what I expected, because I guess when I was watching this, I thought Porco Rosso was going to be the central character of the movie. Uh, but Fio becomes his mechanic. She helps repair his plane, gets him back in the air. And then she actually go becomes his hostage uh, in order to get her money back for fixing the plane. But she kind of has a, a thing like a crush on Porco Rosso almost. And she's with him on his journey. Uh, I think that's interesting juxtaposition of characters where he sees, he sees a lot in her that he wish he kind of had, right. Or he starts to see some of his humanity come back through her, which I think is very interesting. And there's a scene where she's sleeping on the beach and he's working on getting the plane ready for a battle. He's about to have with Curtis and she wakes up and she sees Porco Rosso as a human, Right. She doesn't see him as a pig. She actually sees like a human face. And then she like blinks and she looks back and he's a pig again. So I think that's very interesting. Uh, Johnny, what do you think of that? Like that introverted uh, kind of stance this movie takes? I know it's a lot of like psychological discussion here, but I think it's kind of interesting, especially for this kind of movie. No, yeah, I totally agree. I think it's one of those things where it's like you kind of look underneath into somebody's soul to understand what they really are not just look at the outside like it kind of shows you like yeah he may look like a pig on the outside but what does he have inside of him or what kind of I can't say it the right way no it's all it's 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 an it's an interesting discussion to have because i think he sees himself so much as a pig but everything he does is so much to the contrary of what we would associate a pig with uh he's rescuing people he's helping people but he makes it a point throughout the entire movie to just say i'm just a pig no no i'm just a pig i'm just a pig that's all he can see himself as so it's interesting when other characters see him sometimes they don't see him as a pig so it makes you wonder maybe like if there is like a psychological connection between the character I think that's really interesting. I, I'm sure it's a lot of it just feels like it's just one giant metaphor. Like right. that's just how he perceives himself. And he's just kind of, I mean, like we you know with the, the beats of the story, like he's trying to make amends for his past and he sees himself as a pig. But then when everybody else, you know, kind of gets glimpses of him as, you know, as a human, they, they really shows his true humanity again. They're like, Oh, you know what? Maybe he is actually, you know, he's just another human. Yeah, it's weird it's just because I feel like he's trying to convince everyone so much that he is a pig that it's affecting his outward look on people. Like that's what people are perceiving him as because he himself is so convinced that he is uh, one of the most beautiful scenes in the movie. And I know me, Julie, me, you and I had talked about this a little bit prior uh, was the scene where we see uh, Porco Rosso lose his battalion in a battle. Would you want to talk about that scene a little bit? Because I thought that was actually phenomenal. 
Yeah, and it kind of goes into my theory with the whole pig thing. So, you know, he's kind of reliving war stories and how there is a huge dog fight and he loses consciousness. And when he awakes, he sees this giant ring in the sky, a ring of light, and he tries to go up higher and higher. And he sees some of his, you know, fellow pilots and he's calling out to them and they continue to ascend to this ring, which then he does see is just an endless ring of pilots, you know, from his side, from other countries, um, you know, moving on, you know, they lost their fight. And then he starts to vocalize this guilt that he has, you know, I should have done this, or I put myself first and that's why I survived. And that's why I'm a pig because of that. And I think a lot of his view of himself as a pig deals with, I guess, survivor's guilt in a way, like he survived and so many people didn't. And he blames himself for that and he doesn't see himself as anything not as someone who won a battle but as someone who you know put himself over the group so he's a pig because of it but the execution of that scene was just beautiful because both seeing the ring of light itself the way the animation done was quite beautiful and then once he does ascend further and you still see the twinkles of light but all these different planes intermix it was really really a deep touching moment Family film, friends. Family film. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it really deals with a lot of heavy concepts in this movie. And again, I, I don't know how much that's going to alienate the younger audience. Uh, I think they'll be happy just seeing a pig in an airplane flying around. I think a lot of them will probably just get enjoyment out of that. And the adults will kind of get the, the secondary enjoyment. Uh, a couple things, too, I want to point out is uh, Fio. I really like her as a character. Uh, at first, I wasn't too sure how they were going to do that, but I liked some of the dialogue they have, which I think is unique, because uh, it's kind of reflection of the times, right? Uh, Porco likes to just kind of like insult her a couple times throughout the movie, like, oh, you're just a woman. You can't do anything. And if you want to see a strong female character, I think this is where you need to look because she goes, yeah, you're right. I am a woman. I, I, I kind of can't help that. But I can make your plane 10 times better than anybody else's. So it's kind of up to you. I really like that. I kind of how she like just deflects it like, yeah, OK, I'm a woman. I'm sorry. I can't help that. Like not, not a big deal. Uh, again, these strong female leads, while maybe she's not the main character of this story, I really like how they chose to like kind of introduce her into Porco's world and help expand his vision because uh, this movie's just very beautiful at times. Uh, the way they capture the European architecture of what he was going for, uh, especially the climax of this movie. Uh, we talked about in Kiki's towards the end there when uh, they had a big climantic Hindenburg battle. So you could see maybe Miyazaki was testing the waters and what he could do as far as like, you know, the big air fight scenes. Uh, this movie's action's really, really well done. Uh, I think it's kind of very true to actual forms when you look at maybe some of the fighter plane motions of the time period. Uh, it definitely had me on the edge of my seats. And I do like the final confrontation, too, uh, with Porco and Curtis. They end up running out of ammo against fighting each other, and they end up just beating each other up in the water. I, I think that's really funny. Um, again, very, a very romantic, you know, kind of romanticized kind of storytelling here. I like that, too. And at the end, Porco kind of just disappears and we don't know really what happened to the great ace pilot. Um, I like that. You know, I think there's a lot, lot going for it. Uh, another point I do want to bring up too for this movie, and we, we didn't really talk about this. Miyazaki's scores for this movie have been absolutely phenomenal uh, since the beginning of Totoro and Kiki's Delivery Service. I think I might have to argue. I think Porco Rosso has the best score. Uh, and not at all did I ever feel like it was a Japanese soundtrack or a typical Japanese score coming in here. Uh, it felt very raw and very European, very romantic, very action orientated. I, I really liked it a lot. I'm not a huge music guy, but I have to tell you, I, I think it really does accentuate the action and adds just that bit of like, almost like noir mystique to the whole movie, especially when Porco's like sneaking around and stuff like that. I really liked it. I think it did a really phenomenal job. Adam, I want to talk to you a little bit here. Um, what were some of your weaknesses with this movie? Because I think there's a couple things that are maybe a little bit weaker besides the obvious. Is it for kids? Like, who's this really for? Uh, were there anything else that stood out to you with this movie? I would Yes, it seems like things just kind of happen pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, maybe the, the pacing of the story is just a little off for me. Um, because, I don't know, it's just, I guess sometimes, some like the story, how sometimes it goes like from one scene and then all of a sudden, you know, this happens and then this happens. I don't know. It just seemed like it was a little off to me. 
Yeah, I think there, there's it's it's a weird balance that I feel like he couldn't necessarily find the kind of story he wanted to tell, if that makes any sense. Uh, in the other movies, I yes, always felt like does. there was a nice balance of magic and fantasy versus like the historical setting. Uh, I felt like he really he didn't really care too much about the the magical aspect. While we do have those really nice emotional beats, and when they're in there, they're really good as far as him being a pig and what that means and everything like that. But that's not the story I felt like Miyazaki wanted to tell. I felt like, again, I think his true love really was like the airplane fighting sequences, the fighter pilots battling it out in the air. Uh, Did you get a vibe for that, Adam? Do you think that was really kind of what he wanted to tell, like this very European just fighter pilot story and the rest was kind of secondary at times? Yeah, I thought it was so interesting that you said about uh, how he even thinks that the the dub, the French dub, was so much better because it's really what it feels like is like mm-hmm. it's definitely different than the other two movies that we watched. It it's definitely stands out um, differently, and it does feel like it caters to a different audience. Yeah, I think so, and you know, it's it's tough. It, it's a tough recommend uh, for you know a younger audience, but I think someone like uh, like our you know around our age, I think they're going to find something definitely special out of this movie. But for a kid to sit through this, I feel like there's there's a little bit asking there. How about you, John? Do you think your kids would sit through this movie? <laughs> My kids wouldn't sit through any movie. Oh, well, fair I enough. This movie. <laughs> But what do you think? You think what do you think? Do you think Miyazaki lost a little bit along the way here? You think he was too involved maybe with telling a more mature story and kind of lost some of that fant- fantasy element that we were looking for? I mean, I think he did, but I think that he also also captured a new audience too with everything. That's interesting. Like this Kate. movie just seemed di- like he went to a whole different level. Yeah, he almost catered to that older audience that he kind of knew was very into his movies and proved almost to them that he can make a more mature story that just wasn't just a kid's movie. Like he was able to kind of branch off into something else. Uh, Julie, how about you? What did you think? Cause I know when we talked about the end, I'm like, Oh, I feel like it just wraps up again. This is just a constant from Miyazaki. I feel like where I'm just getting these endings that kind of just end. Uh, this one maybe worked out, maybe made the most sense to some extent because it has that little bit of a mystery element, but at the same time, it also is like, it just kind of wraps up with an epilogue, right? It's just like, oh, Porco Rosso disappeared, then I was best yeah. friends. You know, it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think this one definitely had the, I guess, most well-rounded ending out of the three of them, where it made the most... It wasn't such a um, a huge jump, comparatively. I will say maybe the only thing is like when all of a sudden they're like, oh, the Italians know that you're having this fight with Curtis and they're coming to get you. Like, I feel like that, I don't know, there was just some added elements there, but I do like it. It fits with the whole movie, that noir element of, well, now he's just mysteriously gone, but is he really gone? Because then they show that scene of the garden. I can't remember her name, but the singer and you see the plane in the background and stuff like that. And Gina, yes. So I think it plays well to what Porco Rosso as a movie was. Um, so it didn't bother me as much as it did in the last two movies. Yeah. And Gina is a fun character. Uh, I like how she does have this dynamic with Porco Rosso throughout the movie, but I wish we had a little bit more. Cause I think it's kind of like what Adam said. He, he had a couple ideas for a different story, but the pacing just never felt correct. Uh, I know one thing about Porco Rosso, which is interesting. It is based on a manga. There is a manga that this is actually adapted from, which Miyazaki doesn't tend to do very often. Uh, I know we've seen that with Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind, which one we didn't cover, but that was also an adaptation. So there is more to this story prior and after to this film. Uh, So you have to wonder if he kind of took the snippets he really liked and kind of put his own, you know, story together i'd, I'd have to wonder because uh, again I, I think there's a lot of interesting story to be told here and maybe that's part of it too you know any kind of serial you watch you always wonder about these characters and what kind of adventures they had prior and after to this but porco rosso i think it's an interesting film and i think it's about time we gave our final scores i'm gonna give porco rosso an 8.9 out of 10 i refuse to end this fight with a draw ha 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 You stupid cowboy! There's no way you can hit me with that! Oh, yeah? (laughs) You think you can hit me from there? Come on, give me a break. Kind of like what Adam said, I think the biggest detriment to this movie is 
the first thing is really the pacing. Um, it does move either breakneck speed or it starts to slow down incredibly. It kind of can't determine where it wants to be as far as the pacing. Uh, is it a kids movie? I, I don't think so. Not so ever. It's definitely a family movie, so you should watch with your you know your family together and enjoy it. Uh, but I think this is more just Miyazaki wanting to prove he could do something. And he does it exceptionally well. I think the animation is even better than the other movies. I keep telling you, as we go, I'm going to keep saying it. It just looks better than last time. Uh, we got the deep airplane models, that European setting, I think is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, this is a very unique movie, and I don't think it should be missed, but just go in with your expectations. Uh, I wouldn't say there's a bad Ghibli movie, at least not from what I've seen going on as of yet. Uh, but this is definitely... Maybe not one of the most memorable out of all of them, but I'd like to change it. I think Porco Rosso is a special movie, and I think especially with an older audience, it is something that you're going to get something special out of. Adam, how about you? Where do you stand with this one? I'm going to give Porco Rosso an 8.8. God was telling you it wasn't your time yet. You think? Seems to me he was telling me I was a pig and maybe I deserve to be all alone. You can't believe that. You're a good person. No, the good guys were the ones who died. Or maybe I'm dead and life as a pig is the same thing as hell. I think the pacing is definitely the true uh, detriment here. Um, but I think given it really is Miyazaki just branching out, I guess to see what kind of supernatural elements he can you know, not work with, I guess. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that in further films. Um, but it's still a phenomenal film. I, I really enjoyed watching this one. And it was, I mean, like Julie said, I, I feel like this one was definitely uh, a little bit funnier than all the other ones. Yeah, the comedy definitely hits. And I wonder if it's just the dub cast. I wonder if I watched it in another language or in the original Japanese with the subtitles. I wonder if it would have hit the same. I don't know. Maybe just Michael Keaton being a pig is just too damn charming. Uh, it's, it's hard to say, but I, I really do think this movie lands that way. Uh, John, how about you? What do you think of this one? I give this movie... Solid 7.8. Come on, shoot! No, he's not going for it, just as I thought. If the pig shoots now, he'll kill Curtis. I bet he plans to tire Curtis out and then shoot his engine up instead. What a show off. Poor cow. It was funny. It's interesting. I had like a good, like, secondary. I mean, I like Michael Heaton. I thought he was good as a pig. And I thought, like, the tone to this movie was very good. So I enjoyed it. All right. Very good. Very solid. Julie, how about you? What do you think of this one? I'm going to give Porco Rosso an 8.9 out of 10. I bet myself that if a certain man comes to visit me when I'm out here in my garden, then the two of us will fall in love. But that fool only comes to my restaurant at night. He never stops and shows his face in the daylight. I enjoyed this movie a lot more than I thought I was going to. This is something that I definitely would go back to um, again, just to, you know, see what I missed the first time around. Um, the sense of humor was really great in this movie. Um, thanks to the voice cast. Um, there's also Brad Garrett, smaller part, but I just love when I hear his voice and things. He's always funny. Um, but you have the comedy, but then you have some of the, you know, darker or heavier elements of the movie. Beautiful animation as always, um, but yes, pacing definitely was an issue. I felt myself kind of losing it a little bit in the middle part of the movie, um, but definitely something that I enjoyed um, and definitely kind of changed of pace for him, which was nice. Yeah, and this isn't, again, as I kind of mentioned earlier in this review, this isn't the last time we're going to see uh, kind of his love letter to the aviation. Uh, you could definitely tell Miyazaki has a very huge fascination with the history of you know, aviation as far as airplanes and its relation to Japanese history, which uh, we're going to see that a little bit later on in this series when we talk about the wind rises. Uh, so look, something to look forward to. But again, uh, I think Porco Rosso should be checked out. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend it. Uh, just in case we haven't mentioned before, all these movies are currently streaming on HBO Max. So if you are interested in checking them out, uh, just do one of those free subscriptions for a brief time. Check them out. I, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth your time, especially to experience some of the magic of Miyazaki. But Thank you all so much for joining us for this episode of The Real Review. Real Anime will continue on in our next review where we'll see you. We'll catch you next time. If you guys like what you've seen here today, consider giving this video a like and leaving your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to stay up to date with everything Real Movie Guys related, make sure to hit that subscribe button and check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.
And don't forget, all you audio listeners at home, we are available on many podcasting platforms. Just search The Real Movie Guys, you should pop right up. Thank you again all so much for joining us on this episode of The Real Review. We are The Real Movie Guys. Real guys, real movies, real thoughts. Catch you next time.